Hello. In this video, I'd like to show you guys uh, just all the nitty gritty details of uh, editing with the 3D audio plugin and how you can how you can do all the the stuff um, that's built in. So uh, this is our sound source uh, 3D view uh, where you can position these sound sources anywhere around your head in 3D space. Um, you can double click to add some more. You can have up to eight per audio track. Um, so moving around the view is just done with a either horizontal or vertical scroll uh, and pinching to zoom if you're on a Mac with a trackpad. Otherwise, if you're on Windows, you can just use the, the scroll wheel and hold down shift to get the horizontal scroll or alt to get the uh, zoom scroll. Uh, you can also use the arrow keys to to move around as well and then alt and up and down to zoom in. The same basic system applies to moving around sources. Um, you got the scrolling, zooming, uh, arrow keys. Arrow keys um, actually move the the objects around uh, in an XYZ Cartesian fashion as opposed to a radial fashion like the scrolling does. Um, we can we can add points to define a path for our sound sources to move on by having a sound source selected and then just double clicking in space. So now that we got a little path going. We can also add a path point at the location of the source by having the source selected and hitting X to drop a path point there. Um, we can also move, if we have things selected, uh, and want to keep them selected, but we want to move the view around um, you know, temporarily, we can just hold down the controller command keys with that selected stuff that's still there and now we can move the view. So that way you don't lose your selection, just release the control or command key and then you can get back to moving the selected objects. Uh, so also to edit the position, we can right click on the object, whether it's a source or a path point, and then we can see here the the radius, azimuth, and elevation coordinates, and then the x, y, z coordinates below that. And we can go in here and, you know, edit the the values, um, you know, accordingly um, to move things around pre more precisely. Um, also, with the path points, there's a particular ordering to them, of course. So we can change that if we need to as well by uh, right-clicking. Um, say I want to, you know, go zero, one, two, three, etc. If I wanted to go zero, one, you know, we can make this one. Now it's a uh, you know different order, and you can mix up the ordering, uh, you know, however you need kind of more easily like that, as opposed to just dropping a whole new set of path points in a particular order. Um, let's see what else we got on the screen. We, we can uh, have a circular path like we have now, or a point-to-point -point path. To, do, to toggle between those two, we just have to select a source and then uh, hit the P key, and that'll toggle between circular and point-to-point -point path. Uh, we have, you know, all the kind of basic uh, editing hotkeys built in, like Control A to select all. We have uh, Control C to copy. We can, uh, you know, backspace or delete, obviously, to delete what's selected. We can copy just, you know, certain path points like that. Um, otherwise, if you know just the source is selected, we get a whole new copy of the source and its path. Uh, let's see what else here. So the V key it can be used to toggle the views, as opposed to just clicking up here on the tab bar. Um, H toggles the help screen. 
or you can just use the button. Uh, the Doppler key is uh, D. Uh, and that brings up the speed of sound slider, which lets you adjust what the speed of sound is in our little virtual environment. Uh, we can go all the way down to a pretty darn slow and extreme Doppler effect. Um, you know, 343 meters per second is typical of a physical air. You can go up to 500. Um, it really just depends on how fast your sound source is moving for what speed of sound setting you might want. Um, you can also just edit the value uh, with the text box down here. Um, so there's that for the Doppler effect. We can... Uh, let me get back to this M key uh, in a second here after we talk about some automation. So let's do that next. So this is the automation view, and as you can see, we have this path to find now for the source to move on. And the vertical axis controls where it's at, uh, you know, kind of percentage-wise on the path. Uh, the horizontal axis is, of course, time. So we can lay down, you know, some points. Maybe one, something simple first at uh, zero, zero here. And then another path point around 20 seconds and, you know, 100% of the path. Um, if we, uh, so we can play this now and you can see the sound source moves along the path as we just described. We're going to add lots of fancy, you know, fast, that was very fast, <laughs> but, uh, you know, faster movements um, and get some pretty custom automation curves. Um, but as you notice right here, um, as the source just, um, or the time just passed where we had some, some automation to find the source was just muted. So, um, we can, you know, if we want to just have some, some basic automation loop over and over, what we can do is select all the points and then hit L to toggle the loop. Uh, feature on or off and now it'll just loop over the region um, that we defined so we can also you know drag around these you know loop regions and put in custom values with the right click to access the text edit box um, we'll leave that like that for now let's see um, so we can also, of course, uh, right click on the points, the automation points themselves to edit their values, um, dial it into something particular. We can also, uh, use, uh, let's see. So if we, if we select a point or group of points, we can have it auto align with the other points. Uh, either horizontally or vertically if we uh, hold down the alt or option keys. So you, now you can see that point wants to line up with the other point that's unselected. And we can also um, do the same, you know, horizontally as well. So that's kind of a nice feature to have to line things up. Um, Of course, um, same thing as on the other screen. We got, you know, Control A to select all, Control C to copy, um, you know, Control Z to undo, Control Shift Z to redo. Um, also, with the the automation curve, there's a few different segment types we can have. Uh, by default, these are all curvy segments but if we want we can have straight segments by selecting which ones we want to define as straight and then hitting s for straight now we have uh you know straight linear connecting uh connecting segments there uh, c is for curvy to get it back to curvy so it's s for straight c for curvy and then you can also do o for open and open segments are just muted just like if you you know go off the end here of your 
of what you have defined for your automation curve, it'll just be muted. Same thing uh, with an open segment, it, the source will just be temporarily muted like that. So uh, that's why you might want to use open segments. Uh, so, okay, now let's get to the, the M key to toggle whether the source is moving or not. Um, just got to the end of my track here, so let's go back to the beginning and play this. Um, so the M key, see, it's muted right now, like I was just saying. Um, the M key will toggle whether the source is locked to move on the path you've defined. So if I hit, it's, it's locked to move right now, but if I hit M, then it takes it off the curve and on this screen you can start moving it around some more. So it's kind of nice to do this if you want to listen to your audio that you're processing and kind of find, you know, where different spots sound, find the sweet spot you're looking for and then uh, you can, you know, lay down another path point there or, you know, kind of be able to listen to it and have that feedback. And then when you want to get it back on the automation curve, you just toggle the M key again, and now we're back moving on the path we defined. So that's what the M key does, toggle whether it's moving on the path. Um, let's see, that's almost it. Uh, we... I think we covered pretty much everything on the automation screen. Um, of course, on both the automation screen and the sound source screen, we have, you know, master volume control and then a mix control. So we can, you know, this is a 100% 3D audio plugin, but we can also, you know, get a variable mix between the, you know, unprocessed audio and the processed audio. Um, Let's see, on this uh, auto settings tab, we have um, some features that let you decide um, the audio quality. So this auto detect mode is what I have on now. And um, it basically detects whatever, you know, processing mode your DAW is using at the time. Um, but I provide this feature so that you could override that setting just for this plugin. Um, you know, in case you, you wanted to for some reason. Um, some DAWs, I noticed, didn't have a way to, you know, explicitly specify this, so I, that's why I added this little feature. Um, the real-time mode is going to produce, uh, well, it's going to have a lighter processing load on your CPU, so you can listen to things in real time while you edit them. But the audio quality from moving sound sources uh, is going to be slightly subpar. You may notice some little clicks here and there for moving sound sources um, because you know it's not fully interpolating uh, basically what it needs you know the the HRTF the head related transfer function you know on a per sample basis um, that's what it does in the high quality mode and that takes a lot of CPU power so um, you'll definitely want to use a high quality mode for moving sound sources in your final export but real time you know you may want to actually listen to things in real time so that's what that does um and again this only affects moving sound sources because um uh yeah, the moving sound sources need uh, just a ton of computation to to compute on a per sample basis basically um so stationary sound sources you shouldn't really have to mess with this so much um and then uh yeah you can visit my website by clicking that button, I'll take you to uh, my website as my browser opens. Um, you can get some additional, you know, info or I'm not sure exactly what I'll end up putting ultimately on the site, but uh, well, that's comforting. <laughs> um, you can, uh, you know, obviously watch some tutorials and see what other plugins I end up uh, getting out eventually and uh, purchase a copy if you haven't done so already, if, um, all the support's greatly appreciated. Um, that's about it. Um, yeah, thanks for watching and stay tuned for more info.